Hey guys, thanks for listening. Before we get to this episode, I just wanted to let you know that we did release an episode of Kenny and I being interviewed by Linda, um, and that's on YouTube only. Uh, it's just we didn't want to interrupt our podcast schedule, so there is an episode on YouTube of the two of us getting interviewed. Um, so anyway, we hope you enjoy this episode. Winnie is uh, remarkable, remarkable. Her story is amazing. It's a little bit longer, um, and I'm now making it even a little bit longer. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for listening. Welcome to This Commerce Life. We are an unscripted podcast dedicated to small businesses and entrepreneurs in the retail and consumer packaged goods space in Canada and the United States. I am Phil Chang, co-host and co-founder. And I'm Kenny Venucci, co-host and co-founder of This Commerce Life. Our love is the journey to retail, and our passion is sharing that with you every week. Side, your side. Oh, she's on your side. Hi, Winnie. Hey, how are you? I'm well. How are you? I good, good. I feel good. finally I meet you, but I mm-hmm. heard your name many times. No, from, you know what? I think we were on. Um, you and I were on a bunch of calls together, right? Oh, you met Kenny because you've heard Kenny. I have name. not. Yeah, I have not met Winnie. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't met online, no. but I heard you guys' name, and uh, so oh, also yeah. I'm the mentor for a Forum in. That's in right. Canada. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's, uh, that's where I met uh, Phil and uh, several yeah. other people. They're always talking about you guys' show here. Said uh, it's a oh. wonderful one. Oh, that's nice to hear. <laughs> yeah, for for entrepreneurs, and uh, so oh. I just wanted to know a little bit about your your um, podcast. Yeah. So we we are. I mean, we're a. Um, it's is you know we're it's called this commerce life and we are a retail focused podcast and um, we're we're very small business uh, small business maybe medium sized business focused mm-hmm. and we we are really fascinated by you know entrepreneur stories right some of them work out some of them don't mm-hmm. uh, we think all of that is part of the process of of finding success. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, whether it's in retail trade or, or whether it's um, just building your own business. And then we're really committed to, you know, um, telling interesting stories that also teach you something along the way. Um, I think that of all those things, the, the overriding factor is that we, um, you know, we, we, both of us really love Canadian stories. We think that there are not enough Canadian voices. We We don't think... Um, Canadians are just um, like we're really humble people and we don't we don't talk about success you know like we talk about famous people like the Westons and the Reesmans and you know oh, yeah. but there are all these amazing entrepreneurs and businesses that are making things happen um, that we uh, you know we want um, you know we would like this is your AI so let me let let your AI uh, yeah, just just you know you don't need the AI you, you can delete it Oh yeah. Okay. You I can. You really have to let it. Yeah, exactly, yeah. just automatically join any meeting because I'm basically meeting clients or meeting people the whole day, you know, like a different platform, Google Meet, Zoom, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. MS Teams. And so, how long are you guys uh, doing this? Are you in LA or US? No, 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 we're here. We're Canadian. We are. Uh, Kenny's on your side, so he's in Vancouver, and I'm okay, here in I'm Toronto. Here. Okay. Um, and we we've been doing it six and a half years. Kenny? Six and a half years. We've been I've been doing retail for forty plus years. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, we've been doing the podcast for six and a half years now. Yeah, yeah. But Every how week. Does the um start this this podcast? Because <clears throat> you really needed to building up your audience, right? You're building yeah. up almost like you're building a business from startup. That's very right. really different. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Winnie, you, know you got to do Winnie. You got to find a fill. <laughs> uh, yeah, because you find I, a I, fill, I, you can solve all your problems on that. No, because I, I'm quite fascinated about your. What was I? How you guys <laughs> start and and uh, because I'm I'm uh, I, I own a small accounting um, firm and basically yeah. we're serving over more than 200 probably right now 230 small and medium sized business in Lower Mainland. Wow. Yeah, you know, old Vancouver and <clears throat> yeah. Um, so across probably 25, 26 different industries. 
So it's always fascinating me to talk to different clients, to advise wow. them. And, and that's the part that makes me uh, really, really um, love all the small business. And this is also one of the reasons why two and a half years ago I launched this uh, foundation called a Vision yeah. to Reality Foundation. Because yeah. I truly wanted to share the knowledge and teaching them, encouraging them, and helping them to creating an online platform to, for them to be encouraged to be there if they're down and somebody pick them up, right? I mean, many yeah. of the entrepreneurs yeah. feel so lonely when they're depressed, when they, the things it, didn't go their but way. Entrepreneurship is very lonely, right? It's like, lonely. Yeah. You, you know, when you're yeah. a contractor, whether you yeah. build a business, there's lots of people who want you to pay them to do <laughs> things for you. But when you need opinions or you need, like you need a trusted confidant, they're hard yeah, to find. Exactly. Right? Somebody just asks a question, yeah. right? I mean, you don't know what to do. And, and you really need a support group around you. Um, it, so that's also, really um, fascinating. It's also one of those things when you like, I, I feel like when you, when you are an entrepreneur and you have a spouse, for example, is these are those moments that you go, yeah, I did this thing. And then the spouse doesn't really understand. They go, yay. And you're going, mm -hmm. <laughs> do you have your own family right? in Toronto yeah. yourself? Yeah. I do. Yeah. Your family? Yeah. Yeah. I, I have my, my husband that's always supporting me, which is wonderful. I have my son 20 years old and yeah. my both parents are living in our house. And <laughs> so right. we have yeah. a, a family support around here. Um, yeah. But my idea about entrepreneurship very a little bit different than other people's approach. Um, so that's yeah. I, I'm thinking it's the good way we can discuss because I came as an international student, know nothing, didn't speak English, no money, no nobody in Canada. <laughs> Basically, it's around thirty years ago, and, and I just have a big dream. Always want the personal freedom. Like personal financially freedom too. Let me easy. let me do a quick intro and then because I think where you're going is is really interesting. That's so where we want to go. We we've oh, got we've great. got um, we've got Winnie um, Hugh on with us and she's the CEO of Next Gen yeah. Accounting. Winnie Sue. Uh, Winnie Sue. Sorry, uh, Sue. Winnie Sue. H S U is her last name. So Winnie Sue. She's the CEO of Next Gen um, Accounting. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then she um, also runs um, Vision to Reality Foundation. So, um, and and how I you you um, you know as listeners, you've heard a little bit about how I met Winnie. Winnie and I, um, well, Winnie, Kenny, and I are all part of um, you know the mentor uh, the mentor group, and and we're the forum. And we're, you know, there to help women entrepreneurs grow, right? And so um, Winnie and I have met on a bunch of the founders calls, um, you know, um, and then and then Winnie's meeting Kenny for the first time. But we're excited to have you on. Um, mm -hmm. Now that I've kind of like interrupted your flow, maybe what I'll do is um, like the next kind of like 40, 45 minutes are yours. We mm -hmm. would love to hear your story. Like the, I think um, one is we, we have lots of brands and retailers on this call. So um, anytime that we find people who bring services to these industries, yeah. we love that. So I think um, brands will be very interested in, um, you know, the accounting services that you bring as well. And then also okay. then let's talk about this, this um, vision to reality foundation as well. So anyway, so um, I'm going to shut up now. Um, yeah. You go back, you were, you're an international student. You came here. Off you yeah. go. About uh, 30 years ago in the early 90s, and I finished my bachelor degree in science in China. Um, so I was an honor student, very, um, you know, top guns in, in schools and graduate, worked for a few years. Um, and then uh, I decided to come here to do my master's. That's basically is the goal. Uh, but when I came here with one thousand dollars and didn't speak English, and no, not even a soul in Canada, I landed in where we are, <laughs> like airport, and somebody here was one guy in China. I know I, I worked in the company. He know a girl uh, was a international student that came here around two years earlier than me. So she was holding a plaque, basically my name on it to go to the where we are to pick me up. I know nothing about Canada and you know the early um, 90s in China I didn't have McDonald's, didn't have Pizza Hut, didn't have anything. Um, and I never see a washing machine, never see a um, dishwasher, right? Basically, you know, like life is totally different there. Never see anybody living a house. Nobody around me have a car. Um, so very different life. Mm -hmm. 
but I'm you, glad the missions. You're in the 90s, which is early, early you know, 90s. really early internet era, right? So you can't yeah. even, there's no such thing. Like you, it's no. not like Never now even you, you can jump on the, you can jump on YouTube. Oh, and you can, you can no, say, there's nothing. Right? No, there's, there's nothing, nothing. Right? Like, the, maybe in the later 90s, they have those, uh, uh, I or I something. There's something. Yeah, yeah. Something you can you can talk online, right? And I remember in my university that the computer room was like a such a secret room, and all of us have to wear a head mask and the booties, and and because they cannot be any dust, because the one computer was taking the whole classroom, like all the supporting behind. But now one of our iPhones can take everything in oh, that one room. Same right? computing so power, right? Actually more. Yeah. 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 So it's quite fun. When I came here, I was scared, of course, and didn't really speak English. So the girl is really nice and she picked me up and uh, she said, oh, I rent a basement suite for you already and I'll take you there. So basically it took me to in the east side of Vancouver. It's very uh, rundown house in a basement. There's not finished. Only one. I got two room finished and inside was all not finished. There's yeah. one one wrench still right in the middle of the room and all the scaffoldings you can tell and uh, only the two rooms finished. There's another wow. student rent another room and this girl rent another room for me. And in the room, one mattress on the floor and one lamp. And she said, I, I pick up those from the back alley for you. <laughs> Basically, oh that's, exactly well, that's, like, that's exactly what you want to um, hear. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, but, but I was quite excited because the whole way driving there was in, in April. It's beautiful Vancouver with all the cherry trees, the blue skies. I just feel it's, I'm free. You know, that's in my Wait, heart. Are you from Hong Kong or from mainland? Mainland China. Yeah, Where mainland in mainland? China. Yeah. Mainland China, Beijing. Oh, in Beijing. Wow. Uh, Beijing. That's like you so came from a very, very, very large city to huge. Yeah. It's <laughs> like this. right now I believe 13 million people. Yeah. Not one city. Yeah. And you came you came with no family though. Yeah, no no like, family, no, no family. Everybody is back home at the time. And, and, and you, uh, don't, you don't know what you're walking don't into. Know. You don't know what but like, even your Chinese is most this is a Cantonese city, obviously. Most yeah, of, I, I have really, no idea. I basically have no Mandarin, idea. assuming, right? Yeah, obviously. I speak Mandarin. Yeah. In the beginning, actually I applied to US and US give me scholarship, a master's degrees, whatever. I passed TOEFL exam, you know, the English and everything. But I don't know how to speak. Only know the grammars, maybe pass the right. exam. Um, but the US consular in Beijing refused my visa for twice. Um, so eventually somebody said, why don't you come to Canada? <laughs> I said, where? <laughs> so they said, oh, Vancouver is pretty nice. You should go there. I said, is this near the Eskimos? <laughs> Basically, that's my question. Some days. <laughs> yeah, because in my mind, I, I thought Vancouver was like near the North Pole. It's really super cold and never know anything about Vancouver. Uh, so basically, the one person, um, he from Hong Kong, and he went to Beijing to do some business. He might, you know, uh, know my dad. Mm -hmm. And he says, oh, I just immigrated my family in Vancouver. It's a pretty nice place. I can help you to pick up an application. <laughs> so that's basically how it's happened to come to Vancouver. Wow. Um, and basically, truly really know nothing. But the girl actually picked me up. I'm so thankful for her because she gave me a map of Vancouver City. And then give me another map with all the buses and sky trains. So two maps she gave to me, and then give me one bag of a grocery with some potato, uh, with uh, like a dozen of egg, you know, some uh, toilet paper and and a cup of like some those instant noodles. So right. she said, "Oh, Winnie, at least you can survive for a week. <laughs> you don't have to buy anything." And so she gave me that bag. I'm so thankful. And then I I, I asked her. I said. I only have one thousand dollars. I paid three hundred rent today. What am I supposed to do? And she said, "Oh, oh, Chinese student. We find job in in Chinatown. You know, like I work in a Chinese restaurant in the weekend. <laughs> you can go to Chinatown tomorrow, pick up a, a newspaper, and then you're just looking for jobs." So she basically told me, and then she gave me uh, about I think five or ten quarters. Canadian quarter. She said, I'm sure you don't have a quarters in your pocket. <laughs> you don't, there's no phones in your room. You have to go to on the street, on the night street, basically. And the night street, there's a phone booth. You can go there to make phone calls to find jobs. I said, sure, you know, I can do that. Basically, I land here in a Sunday. And Monday morning, I have no jet lag. Just walking two hours to Chinatown. 
because I don't know how to take bus. So basically, right. I'm reading the map. At least I know how to reading the map. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Walk to yeah. Chinatown, pick up a Chinese newspaper, starting to make phone calls on the street. Um, but uh, almost all the phone calls they speak Cantonese, because well, even Vancouver, in Vancouver, right? Yeah, in Vancouver, yeah. and nobody understand the Mandarin. No. And my she was so poor. Um, so eventually I found a family and uh, they're a mixed marriage uh, family. So the wife know how to speak some Mandarin and the husband only speaks English. <laughs> so basically she said, oh, I'm looking for a housekeeper. Um, because we applied the Filipino housekeeper, they come in, in another few months and now it's only April. Can you help to work for a few months? I said, sure, definitely I can do it. So she asked me, this is a Monday and Tuesday I went to interview. And then Wednesday, I got the job. Wow. And there did you three days. You're three days in Canada and you got yeah, a job. Yeah, three days in Canada. So I have to talk to the landlord. I said, I only live here like three days. Can you refund my money <laughs> for the rent? <laughs> because I paid the $300 for the whole month. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. So it's a very nice landlord. She understand, you know, where my, my situation is. And she, at least she took about 10 days, uh, took a hundred dollars, uh, gave me $200 back, which is wonderful. Pretty nice. Uh, so I started my housekeeping uh, and babysitting job. And that's basically the humble start. So the first five years, around five years, I basically did the McDonald's, white spot, um, um, like warehouse packing boxes, cleaning houses, and all those work uh, as normal, you know, international student. I have my parents at this. You're still going to school at this time too. Uh, around September, I starting to go to school. So basically, every day is sleeping around two hours, <laughs> three hours. Yeah, you can, that's, that's a busy life. Yeah, you have to do it. But the, every minute, I love it. The, the reason is I never thought that's a job. Is is the mentality and the confidence inside me? Every single things I did, I always thinking that's an opportunity. So this is the mindset I feel so as an entrepreneur you have to have. It's wow. not a job uh, because many people are thinking, okay, you're cleaning houses. So that's just you earn a few dollars an hour. That's just a job. But for me, it's not a job because I learn how to use the cleaning solutions for different surfaces, right? <laughs> I know how to how to cook in that house, and they have three little kids. I learn how to drive. I learn how to take them to school, do all the after school activities, and I have to write down every day a time management, how to cleaning all the nine bedrooms, bathrooms, how to cleaning their swimming pools, how to cleaning their two Mercedes, how to do uh, cooking for these three kids, packing lunches. So every day I was writing down the schedules. So that's a time management training. That's a project management training. And I, I love how you look at things. Yeah, I, I never <laughs> used awesome. a vacuum machine in my life. And their vacuum machine was the host to plug on the wall. Yeah, no, it, uh, yeah. It was central. a huge mansion house. But the thing is, I feel I can arrange, okay, send the kids to school and then do this, do this, do this. And then I can save two hours. I can watch TV to learn English. Basically, that's my goal. Oh my God. <laughs> and then I put earphones with a Walkman at the time. There's no iPod or nothing at the time. Yeah. And I'm listening yeah. English all the time. And another big decision where the price you can say, people will say now is the price you paid, is I packed my two Chinese books. A uh, couple of Chinese magazine, fashion magazine as a young 20 some years old girl loves those fashion magazine Chinese. And then two cassette tape was the favorite singer I love and touch my heart with their lyric. And I packed in a shoebox, taped it, wrote there, Winnie, in two years when you know how to speak English, you can open it. So that's <laughs> the oh You God. are. You are you are pretty cool. Very ballsy. I you really, really are. I, just the confidence in my heart. Like, you really have like an abundance of confidence, though. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I, as a young lady, because I truly contribute back to all the life experience I've been through. Because I went to labor camp with my parents at age five, and for their for five years, and basically the the red guard came to our house took everything from my mom and dad and gave them two luggage and said you guys are sent away to the poorest place in china during the cultural revolution wow. and i i 
I went with them at age five. So I transferred 10 different schools from a K kindergarten to high school graduation. And many people think that's bad things. I think that's great things because I have to learn how to deal with new people at any time. Because <laughs> the shortest school I stayed two months, the longest one was my senior high for two years. That's the only place I stayed two years. And many new parents here in Canada I met, and they said, oh, I don't want to take my kids just, you know, off the school because they used to this one, whatever. I think it's the best way my parents did that. So they gave me the resilience. They, they teach me the way how to, how to read people, how to go to a new situation to deal right. with that, right? I mean, so that's basically uh, my personal experience. I believe those all accumulate together to have that tenacity, to have that resilience. Um, and nowadays, everybody talking about it. Now, I was going to ask if you were scared, but apparently you wouldn't oh, have been scared. Yeah, I, I, don't, I feel like a lot of scared of anything. I don't think, well, I don't I, think you would be I either. I mean, scared, yeah, inside my heart, of course, I'm lonely. I cry almost, almost every week and, and only can call my parents uh, once a month for 10 minutes. I have an alarm clock beside me because uh, um, Kenny, you know, in Vancouver, that time is uh, uh, BC Tell. Not we had the phone at 11 o'clock at night to get the cheapest rates. No, they were charging $4.75 a minute for me to call China. It was, it's crazy. And I remember, like I used to phone yeah, trades. I only when... earn $2 an hour babysitting. You, you, can't, so, you can't do it, it's crazy. Yeah, so I cannot afford to call my yeah. parents. Um, and oh every time God. I call my mom and dad, I always tell them life is great and I cry like a baby after I put down the phone. So basically that's the humble start. And so many people were saying, you know, like, how can you become successful later on? Because I said, in my mind, I just wanted to have financially free. Because I saw so many of my Canadian friends, they're not free. They're living in such a free country. They're not free. The reason is they're controlled by their boss, by their job, by their business. <laughs> they're controlled by their uh, material, you know, like uh, ownings. And they're not really free. When so, you got to do a podcast. Yeah, the true financial freedom in my heart. Seriously. Yeah, I mean, I can do any. You any should do a podcast. I always do your podcast. Yeah, I, wow. I, I was already on different podcasts as a guest. And uh, so many of the friends now invited me and also keynotes and panels of, to different organizations. Um, but just like, a, you know, in, in my heart, I wanted to first achieve financial independence. Uh, that's me. You have enough money to pay the bill. You earn the money, right? I mean, you're comfortable with your income and sure. your, your expense. That's a, 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 how to say, financial independent. Most of the people in Canada can reach there, right? I mean, if they have certain, you know, ways to, to learn. But a financial freedom, this means to me, is every single day you wake up that day belongs to you, not yeah. belongs to anybody else. Yeah. Yeah. You can make a decision who you want to talk to, who you wanted to be on podcast to, <laughs> who you wanted to have coffee, lunch, and it's a nice day outside. I want to go out, take a walk, do hike, whatever you wanted to do. That day, you're not controlled by money. But because Winnie, you when you came, so when you came from China, though, so I must, I'm gonna, I don't know, but I'm gonna guess at that time you weren't gonna be massively entrepreneurial in China. Right. I don't think it was no, probably no, highly not promoted that, business, no. not at that moment. Years no. later, more so, but yeah. definitively. So in your in this body of yours, where do you, where do you find this business thing? And the, you don't come from a business dream. world. No, it's the dream. It's the my mom and dad are both not business or not people around me like that. But it is I believe it's the desire. Is that when you find your why, you find your way. When you find your why you find your will. When you find your why, you find your win. That's what John C. Maxwell's favorite quote in his book. He's yeah. one of my favorite um, authors. I read a lot of his book. And uh, every time I'm thinking back to that quote, it's true. When you have your why, the why in my heart is to achieve that financial freedom in right. Canada. Because I can see money everywhere. I just feel how come people don't go to pick them up? Basically, I, that that's like a like a few years after I've been in Canada. I said everywhere is funny. Everywhere is working experience uh, or opportunities. How come you guys said you cannot find jobs? How come you said you cannot find place to so, earn money? Can, can I can I just tell you something? I, I think it's the thing that makes so some of the things we, we I think 
I think Kenny, and you'll you'll tell me if, but I, I think I speak for both of us. Like we subscribe to a lot of these things, right? Like the reason that the two of us are entrepreneurs and we run our own businesses, right? We choose the clients we work with is so that we can wake up and have some fun doing what we do, right? Like the podcast, we actually, you know, we, we, we don't, we don't, um, what's the politest way to, we don't take instruction very well. So yeah. if we don't like to do it, we're not doing it on the podcast. Yeah. Um, and we don't really care. <laughs> yeah, so that's the, the idea because I yeah. always feel as I wanted to be myself. And even in China, I feel many times that even I'm pretty good, a student and everything, yeah. I don't feel I'm fitting because I truly wanted to be who I am. And, yeah, and yeah. as long as I don't hurting anybody, right? I wanted to be yeah. able to be myself. Yeah and uh, not controlled by other people. And the same, even I'm pretty good at employees in any job I got because it's a work ethic, the yeah. respect for that business, right? I mean, that's, I believe, becoming a good employee, but nowadays I'm not employable for sure <laughs> because of two opinion lies and also- Yeah, I think the three um, of us are probably the same. We're, we're, really we're right there with you. you. I, I don't you think so, so So this yeah. is also one of the reasons when I started to do accounting, dealing with all these small business, I love them. Because I feel as they all feel the same way like me. <laughs> so when, how did you start? Like, well, when you went to you know you went to university uh, here or college or whatever, mm -hmm. did you would, did you want to be an accountant? Is that what sort of, or did you just kind of slide yeah, into that? Land into it. I didn't do accounting course. I didn't do anything. I came here supposed to do my master's in science, and I don't okay. have money to pay. Uh, so basically, I just took some night courses, and, you know, in BCIT or whatever business management or some business laws, and I'm interested in and just taking those. And getting into accounting is such a fluke. <laughs> I was working uh, in a warehouse packing boxes for a couple who are uh, lawyers in downtown Vancouver. They own a law firm in, in the Parker Place, that pink yeah. building downtown yeah. Vancouver yeah. and uh, so they they're really adventurous like as a couple they're in their 50s or whatever they went to Vietnam to travel and they saw oh the shirt here only two dollars and in, in Vancouver we can sell thirty dollars so they import a whole container <laughs> or, or sold whole truck full of right. the, the, the shirt they came here they still own the law firm and they don't have time to do it so they hire a salesperson to sell to or the bay you know all those uh, like uh, retail stores the shirt but they need somebody to pack the the order when the salesperson come in the order we need a two dozen red three dozen yellow and uh, how many dozen small size right they import everything as a whole box right. with same size same color so they really hired me as a as a part-time staff in the weekend i go to the warehouse there's no windows it's super hot i go there and they were packed the box with three, uh, six levels of box, each 60, 50 to 60 pounds. And they have no idea. That's what the shipper, you know, installed there. So I went there to pack the box. Every time I have to shift in one box, move that box, I was so, I only five feet, 110 pounds. So it's very hard for me to do that. But I did that for almost two months, never they never heard me to say anything. So one weekend near the Christmas, there is a, lots of orders so two of them came to the warehouse to help me because too many orders they know i couldn't finish and they looked the working condition basically chris the, the lawyer just say winnie how come you never told us this is the working condition you have and i can't even move i'm a six foot guy i can't even move the boxes you're only like you know five feet to move the box i said I just do it slow and you only pay me this many hours i don't care work double you know, you still pay me this many hours, right? Uh, so both of them, they were touched. They, they basically just say, Winnie, if the seven paralegals in my office work half as hard as you, we're going to be zillionaires. <laughs> That's what they, they told me. So the wife, Susan, just say, Winnie, why don't next week you come to my office? I'll teach you how to do billing <laughs> because I don't want to do those. That's exactly how I started. But that's how you started. Yeah, I said, I know nothing about accounting software. I know nothing about billing. And she said, no problem. I still pay you this, this how many dollars? I think $9 an hour or something. And then you come to my office, I'll teach you, you know, like you can do it. So basically I did that. And then I 
I'm just strong enough. I said, I, I can go to find a full-time job in accounting. But basically sent the resumes. I was cleaning somebody's house and the person know a person in, in on West Broadway, a small company. And oh, they said, oh, they're looking for an accounting clerk. They said, we need, maybe I can tell the owner at least to give you an interview. I said, sure, sure. You know, so I sent my resume there. And the owner, out of a friend's face, gave me an interview. The owner was a Jewish uh, Canadian, and the whole office, all Caucasians, <laughs> in nine of them, small business, uh, is a publishing house. So basically, yeah. give me an interview. I went there, and uh, he said, uh, why do I hire you? I have 20 resumes. They're a accounting student. You have no Canadian working experience. Your English is so bad. Uh, you're not accounting background. Why do I hire you? So I look at him, I just say, if you don't hire me, you're stupid. <laughs> he was a shock. <laughs> yeah, that's he a, was that's a mic drop. And, so and then I, I I changed my mind. I said, Oh no, no, no. I, I my meaning is you're make a big mistake. Big mistake. Uh, because I'm I'm smart, uh, I can learn fast, uh, I work really, really hard, and you never meet anybody work hard as as winning. And so basically that's basically my claim. And so so he just say he said uh, um you know i have this senior person want to drop to two days a week or three days a week that's why i need to hire somebody in the accounts uh, receivable to collecting money and i have to pay her i have to train you you know it's not really worth it for my business so in my heart i understand at least i can read the situation right. I'm worried about money so i said why don't i give you an offer you cannot refuse so he said what offer I said, I'll work two weeks for free. I can learn. <laughs> After two weeks, if I cannot learn this software, I cannot do the job, you let me go. You have nothing to lose. So he was in his late 50s, and he looked at me, a young Chinese lady. And he said, Winnie, I really like your attitude. Why don't I buy you a cup of coffee downstairs in Cajon's Coffee? And that's exactly happened, my first accounting job. I was you in that are, PR are, department. Like, you are just hilarious. Yeah, yeah. And, and it was funny things is they asked me to do collection. <laughs> Can you imagine my English was so bad? And then they have 300 clients didn't pay them on time. Uh, the advertising didn't pay them. So I was holding the phone every single day. I'm calling. I basically just call and said, please pay. Give me your credit card. Please pay. <laughs> That's the only thing that I'm saying, I can tell you. And and then the client was yelling, you know, jumping up and down. I hold the phone to the wall. Let them finish yelling. Please pay. Please Give pay. Me your <laughs> it's so funny. And I was laughing like a hell in, in that room. And then after a couple of months, I collected the most money. For this I'm client. not surprised. Some client even come to the office front desk and said, who is this girl you hired? You know, talking to the owner. So I've been your client for 10 years. Nobody ever treated me this way. But the owner hide me in the back and basically said, Oh, this girl's English not too good. And she's a nice person, whatever. And then that person pays, right? So basically, this I truly believe when you know who you are, where you are, and where you're going. You have nothing to fear. You have all the confidence in your heart. And and then in that office, because it was in early 90, probably 1995 at that time, I found this job. And then one of the 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 the, um, the staff in that office is you know living here, grew up here for in his 40s, and uh, doesn't look like a Kenny. But it's a it's a Caucasian guy. As a lot of my 40s either, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> and and he basically just talked to me, just say, Winnie, you know, like all the Chinese people I know is in the Chinatown. They're dirty. They're spilling. Uh, they're, they're spitting on the floor. They're really loud in the restaurants. They don't even know how to use the forks. They were just talking so loud, and, uh, like really. Um, hey, not hey, but they're all Cantonese. It's not their fault. All yeah. Cantonese. So basically, uh, I'm you know, Cantonese too. So we're loud, even though yeah. we don't mean to be. It just, it just. Yeah. So <laughs> so he was uh, saying that to me. I basically yeah. look at him. I said, you haven't met a Chinese like me. <laughs> that's exactly what my answer no, is. But that's your answer. You haven't met all the Chinese. How can yeah, you say so, that? So, so, so I said, every single country, 
have good people, bad Absolutely. people. Absolutely. And also you need to understand. And when the people in different cultures, they talk differently. But that's my point. And that would be the point. They're not bad people. They don't follow exactly. your rules. Exactly. You not following do your not rules. People. Exactly. Yeah, but at that time, I didn't know how to express. I just say you haven't met anybody like me. No, that's good for you. So after two years, I earned all the respect in that office. I bet. Uh, truly, it's a great experience. After two and a half years, but on the side, evening, weekend, I'm building my own bookkeeping accounting business. So were you going to? St so you're going to school at the time? Still, I mean, so you were. You were uh, working, I was going to go to part time. Yeah, part time, and then on the side, I took in, uh, taking clients, still doing cleaning houses. So my first uh, uh, bookkeeping client was I'm um, cleaning that person's house. The wife asked me, said, "Winnie, my husband." Just starting a business in the garage, and tons of a receipt. Do you want to come in the weekend accounting the receipt? <laughs> when when did you sleep? Uh, I sleep for two three hours in the beginning, and uh, so it was really really busy. Um, but it was fun. Yeah, you're learning everything. But after two and a half years, I earned more money on my side business than the full time job. I quit the full time job, and wow. the owner asked me, "Say, I already pay you this much money. Why you quit it?" I said, uh, "Your business owner." Somebody pay me fifty dollars an hour. You pay me thirty five dollars an hour. Who yeah. do you think I should work with? <laughs> That's exactly what I ask. And and this is how I started my own accounting bookkeeping business. And today we have fifteen staff. We serve more than two hundred small business owners. So it's and, and what levels of accounting? So what do you do for people? Yeah. Did you uh, ARAP? Do you financials? Um, mainly we do bookkeeping, financial statement, all the you know GST, PST, payroll, you know work safe, you know all those ones. So we really? do some personal tax, uh, lots of personal tax, and some, or self-employed tax, and we work with eighteen CPA firms. If a client need a CPA firm doing all their T twos and everything, we send them. We 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 exchange clients or right. join clients a lot of them. Um, and since 2016, we convert all our business to online, cloud-based. And mm -hmm. today, all my staff work remote. And our clients, I think 90% of our clients, they're all in the cloud-based accounting. We're quite uh, cutting, like, a, you know, early adapters. For, cutting for edge. You can say cutting edge. You were you were cutting edge. <laughs> you can say but, but the most exciting thing is is it's, uh, in two and a half years uh, when when the COVID started. I'm yeah. saying oh, I don't have to see my clients anymore. I have lots of time. I don't. And my science okay. already in in last year uh, high school, and now probably I should take my MBA. So so I applied for for two executive MBAs. So they all accepted me as as a few exec uh, executive That's MBA awesome. program. And also, there's a US one 100% online. So I choose the US one because it's 100% online. So 30 online. years later, you finally get the master's. I'm finally doing my master's degree. <laughs> so I'm thinking, oh, maybe in my mind, I was thinking I should do a master's degree. That's what I come to Canada for you know, 30 years ago. Well, you had time. I mean, why, why exactly, not? I, mean, why yeah. sleep, so I had right? time at home and I finished my master's degree in two years. And, uh, and then I uh, even learned a lot of new technologies the strategies and, and also many many digital ways to do marketing um so it's actually really advanced so after i finished that in 2021 and uh, i started my dream or passion project which is in my heart already for a few years which is the foundation i truly wanted to start a foundation to give back to canada because of my dream come true here I so, feel so many. What, what's, what is the foundation then? So, like, what, yeah, what, what? Uh, since we are you're here now, so like, what, what, what is this? What did you? Because uh, I, I don't know how you find time to do anything. Foundation but. to Reality Foundation, but it, yeah. we offer everything for free: program, free workshop, free mentorship, uh, free storytelling. We invite the local business owner like you to be on our you know, Zoom. So, like, is this for men, for women, for everybody, for young, uh, old? Doesn't matter. Everybody wanted to to be an entrepreneur. Want to be freelance. Starting your own business. Yeah, starting your own business. So, do you people have control. people? Do you have people, Winnie, that are already doing it, or just thinking of doing it, or uh, both? We have uh, people already doing it. We have people thinking about doing it. We have people planning to do it. And we also have lots of business professional like ourselves, myself, to be there to be the mentors and advisor for mm -hmm. them. Uh, so I create. We our team create a one online. Uh, community uh, we launched uh, in I think a year and a half ago and now we have 900 today I checked 941 members from 
all over the world. Forty yeah. plus countries people join you here. You have how many people? Canada, and just phenomenal. Uh, Nine hundred forty-one today. You are like, hundred forty something a, around you, there, and the people just just meeting like a crazy. And and I really feel as we're doing something better than us. You so I so, I'm so tired. Exhaust. <laughs> you really do. I think like I'm I'm tired listening to you. No, because I feel feel that the reason I'm reaching out to you is I'm hoping to creating a movement in all Canada, in all the world for entrepreneur to give back, and that's well, what we'll, my we would my love to play with you. We'll we'll come and. You know, we, we so listen like like so so what you don't know about us like this is for for the two of us we do a lot of this right so well, so the podcast we, is really designed to be that is designed to give back right and then you know we educate a lot so on the youtube channel we give a lot back and then quite honestly we talk to a lot of people and like half the time more than half is we don't charge for it oh, right it's half we, you know, three quarters yeah. Well, I'm trying to be, you know, I'm trying not to be a dummy about it, but but we do. We give away a lot of that. time, right? Because we mm -hmm. also see, look, like there are moments when, you know, what you really need, you know, like all the moments that you talk about where you were hustling hard, what helped you along the way was someone who recognized your effort yeah. and gave you a shot, right? Yeah. Not a free time, they just gave you a shot, right? And yeah. so I think that, we believe the same sort of things. We, when we see people who are working hard mm -hmm. and we see there's a moment where, Hey, you know what? Like you, this could go badly for you. If you don't get some help a little bit, mm -hmm. we jump in, we jump in and go, listen, like you, you don't do it like that. Um, mm -hmm. I should really do it like this. You know, um, Kenny's got some like very tangible, I, I won't share because I think it'll give away who the brands are, but <laughs> you know, but he's had a couple of moments where, we recognized right away that um, there was a brand that that was launching and was sure sure as hell going to go out of business because they were costing themselves out. And yeah. he went no margins, and, right? Sure, well, he went and made sure before they published their margins that he helped them fix it. So he actually went yeah. over and went, you know, like I, I'm not going to let you go out at that you know what i mean like those sort of things that if, when you notice they well they yeah. would make mistakes i'm sure you've done the yeah. same yeah. you just know yeah. that if they go down the path they're going yeah. they're gonna fail and they're gonna lose yeah. money or yeah. maybe homes or yeah. or partnerships or whatever and yeah. for us it's the same as you like at the end of the day yeah. there's there's a lot of businesses in this world and there's a lot of room for everybody to do well yeah. if they yeah. choose to do well yeah. and you don't have to be a jerk in business to do well yeah like I helping people it. is is an obligation. I think we're obligated to. Yeah. If we have knowledge, we should spread yeah. knowledge. Yeah. That's yeah, so, what we should be doing. So basically, one of my public uh, speaking talk, the the topic is don't take your knowledge to your grave. What for? It's useless and, there. And that's yeah. something we all will because yeah. the, the wisdom, the knowledge we accumulated in our lifetime, that's the only things that we can take to the grave. Exactly. None of your clothes, your jewelry, even Does our eyes, so we can take with us. And, and But the thing is that that's what in my heart, I feel that if we can give out those for free to teach those people have the same dream like us when they were 20, when they were 30. Absolutely. I wish I had people help me differently. Yeah, it's, I, I would have made a lot I'm less so mistakes. I, you know, many Canadian like you guys that helped me in the early stage. And We're all in, my clients you trust me. Where and when we'll be there. Right? I think so, what you're doing is fantastic. It's, oh, well, you know what? Well, well, I mean, we're in the middle of a podcast, but we're, well, Phil's coming down next month. We're going to go for coffee or something. Well, like, I, I, I really I'd love, love to, to meet you. Uh, no, because now we are uh, in my foundation. We created uh, a one national movement called Entrepreneur Give Back under Giving Tuesday of Canada. They like it. Last year we proposed this. They said it's a great movement. We wanted to create this as a movement. Ask every single small business, entrepreneur, business professional, giving back one hour of your time to train, to teach, to help, to do a free workshop, to help somebody in your own community, not helping me in your own community. Yeah, good for you. All of our life, all of our fans is come from our community absolutely supporting us right absolutely and why don't we give back to our community so that's why i 
our foundation. I'm I'm so fortunate. I have three co-founders. They all really young. <laughs> Younger than me, I'm 60, and my co found my, my co CEO only 24 years old. Oh my, <laughs> my, God, baby. Of, my my age, uh, my VP of finance only is uh, in mid 30, and then we have a, a, a CTO taking care of our back end, he is only in his mid 40s. So, I'm fortunate to have this team, Good everybody have their strengths than me. I'm Good more in the finance, right? Business development connections but they're in other areas right. much stronger than me so they're taking wow. care of the operation the marketing so the, the back end of the website because we're 100 percent online community or, or, or foundation also right. very cutting edge and until today nobody gave us money <laughs> all the government denied our grant application everything because nobody know what we're trying to do <laughs> they couldn't categorize us i think <laughs> Um, but um, yeah, I, I believe that movie. I'm, I'm not sure because Phil, you may be too young, but uh, Kenny, you maybe know that yeah, movie. Right, right there. there. I, I'm I'm 50. I'll be 52 this year. I'm you 58. Know, of a Dream by Calvin Kastner. That one. That I, I love that movie. I yeah. love that movie. I cry Crazy. and that, I cry every single time I watch yeah, that me movie. Me too. Me too. Every right. single so time. Our team of basically we're just saying, you know, like when you build it, they will come. They will come. Yeah, it's, and now love that. so many accolades now. We got invited to workshop. We invited to be the keynotes. We invited to be their events. And, and the partners are coming to us from outside now, not us to begging them. And I truly believe when you build it and you have the vision, they will guts, come. They will come. And your guts, your your you yeah. to do it. And and uh, because just like you guys, you're doing a, a, a startup, a, a business to promoting other people's business we're helping them and it's 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 just like a zig ziglar says when you help enough people to get what they want you always get what you want right i mean that that's his yeah. favorite yeah. quote <laughs> it's pretty pretty inevitable yeah uh, so i'm i'm just so super thrilled and phil when you come to vancouver for sure i'm i'm buying the lunch <laughs> no problem <laughs> um, i so love it i love it in vancouver here Can i'm you? in east vancouver Oh, okay. Yeah, because I live near Lohi Mall, so it's not too far. Okay, well, I just I live just I live by the Italian Center in East Vancouver. Oh, I love that restaurant, Italian Center. I <laughs> love. Uh, well, I've been going there. Uh, it's fine. I haven't taken Phil yet, but I I love Dario's La Piazza. Yeah. I love it, and yeah. Claudio and Lydia are wonderful people. Mm -hmm. I I love it in there. I'm gonna yeah. I'll take Phil next time he comes. Maybe yeah, I went there for twenty years. Yeah. yeah, I've been going there for like. Well, my wife used to work at the center. Wow. So we met when she worked there. So when we were dating, you know, many, many, many years ago, we'd go for lunch and get the special risotto that uh, yeah. Claudia would make. Oh, I love that place. Yeah, love that it's, place. it's really Vancouver has so many great places. Oh, but we're so Toronto, lucky. I, I really like Toronto too because we we've been there traveling. And it's a nice city. Places. It's yeah, nice and city. now my my husband and I we travel, take our son, we travel all over the world. Yeah, yeah. good for you. Arctica, yeah. Good for you. Uh, in twenty twenty. Three, yeah, we wow. went to Antarctica in the winter time for almost a month. I went to Chile yeah. and then take the cruise to Antarctica. We're going to Africa this summer. Oh, um, good for you! Good for you! Good for yeah, you! Because life is too short. I, yeah, I just because really life well. is too short, and you cannot make it all work, no play. No. Uh, and also, you truly need to tick off all the bucket list. Um, yeah. um, the the, on, on your list so yeah. i have every year i'm taking it off but i think that's the sort of the message i mean if you if people can do it and it's not meant for everybody but mm -hmm. if you have that little entrepreneurial spark and if you can try to um get to a financial freedom whatever that means for you yeah that could mean you need 20 million dollars a year that could mean you make fifty thousand. i don't care what the exactly. number is. yeah whatever yeah. the number for you is try to get there because it does it it does take a lot uh, it takes some pressure off life mm -hmm. and it allows you to enjoy a little bit yeah more and more of it focus and the priority for so sure i have tons to do with a new business a startup but i have three things to every day i finish that's making me feel good right don't feel that i have to do 20 things all together uh, so that's also emotional um, intelligence. You For really sure. have to developing as any entrepreneur. So if I'm sharing the mindset, I have a one. Number one is the why. Number two, you have to have the action and the disciplines yeah. to have the small action every single day to go to where you wanted to go, and never give up. 
right? I mean, number three is the kindness. And you don't have to be a jerk, just like you said, to have your business. Yeah, no, you don't. Treat people, yeah, you treat people with respect and that's yeah. the kindness. I so want to sit and have a coffee with you. I so want to meet you in person. <laughs> Me too, yeah. You are going to get such a hug because I just think you are so cool no, and no. I love what you do. I yeah. never really met uh, uh, somebody have a podcast so successful like you guys. I, I, I have been oh, on several podcasts. And they all, very of them all with That's, that's very sweet. Well, I, I think... Um, you, the one, the I think the the thing that resonates with me the most. I I think Kenny and I've had this frustration for a little bit. I've had it a lot. Is I feel like, um, you know, to to kind of build things, you 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 have to learn a lot of things. But I think that but to really build things, you just need to hustle, right? Like, yeah. and I get I get very frustrated when I'm around. You know, folks that want things but aren't willing to. But aren't willing to do the work to get it, right? You know, it's like, like they're waiting for somebody to give it to them, and that's not how it works. And and I think like with Kenny, one of the things that you know, like when we when we met the first time, I knew we wanted to do a podcast. I knew we were going to be a podcast. He didn't, but I had no clue. We had we had the right we had the right chemistry for a conversation. But I think we also realized that we can work together because both of us are the same, right? Is when we pick up energy and we go like, you know, it's almost like when you can smell it, when yeah. you can smell that there's something there, literally tangibly, you can smell it. Both of us will go, okay, okay, wait, wait, what are you doing here? J drop what you're doing. Let's, let's get on a call. Let's either let it's just, you know, and then you just, and then there are lots of moments, right? He'll go, well, how do we do that? Right? Because people will say, Hey, can you do that? I go, oh yeah, sure. We can do that. And, and then later he goes, so what are we doing? I go, Fuck if I know what we're doing. Like I, I, just, I was there for this yeah. nonprofit. Yeah. I know nothing yeah. about the foundation, yeah. nonprofit. Right? But we you go so fuck if I know, but but you know what? I recognize I can smell it, right? I can smell it. So you so you know what again, when you know what you really need right? in life, you need yeah. a fill. <laughs> yeah, I probably you get, need a fill. Not this yeah. one though. You get your own fill. You don't get my fill. You, you, you get some other fill, you but you need a fill. Yeah, you we, we, if you yeah. can't get Winnie, so, you get so, fill. This but. is why I have so many mentors in yeah. different areas. I have yeah. a several mentors. Yeah, uh, sure. Cooper Lake is one of the very famous ones in yep. Vancouver here, yeah. and he's my mentor. So I'm yeah. meeting him uh, online now, like every couple of weeks. I'm meeting yeah. him for lunch once a month because I pick his brain. I want yeah. to learn how he treat people, how he negotiate, right? How yeah. he think of certain, certain tiny little right. things. Even one tip they give to you is worth everything, because it will save you hours, hours of frustrations. Yeah, and that's why people need a mentors, need somebody have the experience or a network, like you said, or even the network yeah. you're providing. You just we yeah. we tell people all the time if you really want to be a successful entrepreneur, surround mm -hmm. yourself with people yeah. who know way more than you do. Yes always and don't be scared to ask winnie yeah. how do oh, i do that ask. winnie how do yeah. i do that yeah. winnie can i have 10 minutes for a coffee yeah. that's what you do and you do that and and for the most part you'll learn that if it's not a good time like i'm sure you're the same as us we'll be honest i don't have time right now yeah. Yeah. but call I'll me back time for you next I'll monday yeah. Yeah. if you call me back i will help you right yeah like, i'll yeah. do it just i can't be you know i can't drop yeah. everything all the time so both of yeah. you needed to be prepared i will call you back I got to, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of no, anticipating that. I'm, I'm okay with that. Like, I, and I so, think. So, Phil, don't, don't put me out. And uh, if I call you or say, oh, oh. I really needed to discuss with you or to help. No, no, you. I, I won't. I won't. Cause I love it. Right. Like, I think, I think this is how you make things move. Right. As you really, you really do. You need people around you that, mm -hmm. you know, they're going to push you a little bit. You're going to learn from them. And then like, yeah, all of it. Yeah, oh, I just did a, um, a guest speaking this morning with a Spring Activator. They have those that start up a visa program with the cohorts from all over okay. the world. Right. Um, okay. So they invite me last year and this year again. I just did a, a talk this morning and that they all say, you know, like we wish we have your uh, mindset. The mindset is the most important as any entrepreneur. And also now we're starting something. And Kenny, I feel the same way. Sometimes I see somebody so intelligent, so much potential. They just don't want to do the work. To get it's, where it's, they it's, want, it's, right? it's disappointing when you see that because yeah, you I think, think I work in a game. Expectation, but not yeah. And time. you're just looking, think you could just, now again, if your choice is not to do it, I'm not going to force. Exactly. You, you do whatever you want to do. If, you, if, if you're not driven to do it, no big deal. But it seems to me like such a waste. 
because mm-hmm. there's so many people who want and can't yeah. and so many who can and won't. And you're thinking, wow, oh, man, you got yeah. a gift, yeah. you know, and again, yeah. to your point, I mean, I don't know how long we're going to be here. I, yeah. It could be tomorrow morning. It could be 40 yeah, years. Exactly. I mean, you yeah. just don't yeah. know. Yeah. So, and and know. for me, the, the, the selfish reason is that I truly wanted to create a legacy to know our life. Why not though? Yeah, our life count for something. I want exactly. to have something in the world because we've been for here. For sure. You hope you matter so somewhere to somebody. Yeah, and Kenny, you're here in this world. So you leave a track after I, you. I agree with you. I totally agree. So that's agree. basically my personal, you know, selfish driven. Yeah, I get it. Like like areas. Yeah. And my, my two models, I'm going to write in my book. I'm, I'm writing my biography <laughs> or books or whatever. And I have a two life models since uh, age 15 in, in China when the literary teacher asked us to write essays and uh, what do you want to do or what do you want to be when you grow up? I believe every country's teacher asks you to write this. And I was 15 years old. I, I wrote down, all my friends wrote down doctors, lawyers, or whatever, right? I mean, different uh, professions or different right. positions. Only me, I, I wrote there. Number one, I wanted to live a life without regret. So anything I wanted to try, I wanted to do, I'm going to do it. <laughs> or, or I'm going to try it. That's basically becoming my life model. And then the number two, I said, I really like to live a life to be the positive influence for everybody across my life path. That's what I wrote there when I was around 15, 16 years old. And then mm-hmm. that's what the core guidance for whole right. my life. And so anybody I love, I tell them I love you. If I hurt somebody, I go there to say I'm sorry. And if they don't take my, they don't forgive me, that's their fault. I feel yeah. I don't feel it's my fault because I already said I'm sorry. Um, if somebody don't want to be friend with me, I feel that's their loss because I feel I could be a really good friend, really good influence friend. Right. Um, but if they don't want to be friend with me, it's not my loss. Um, so that's the, the mindset constantly in you know, a person's heart to guide the life. Um, so this is why I'm, on my Instagram, I, I'm doing that is that remember no regret in your life. I always right. do this um, because I feel that's the way guide my life to have today. I'm, I'm in tranquility, very calm and nothing going to bring on my prey. If today you guys said when you're a jerk, I'm still me. If you say you're great, I'm still me. <laughs> it doesn't change nothing. Right. Because you know who you are. So that's the most important. You yeah. are a jerk, though. <laughs> you, you know why you're a jerk? Because <laughs> I, I can say this honestly, right? Is the amount of work that Kenny and I do, like, like forget the charitable, all that stuff. Just the sheer amount, right? Because we get that comment a lot, right? Because people go, are you guys crazy? Like, you do so many different things. Mm-hmm. and um. But we do it and we do it gladly because we love what we do. And I feel like standing beside you, Kenny, don't you feel like I don't do anything? I feel like I feel like I'm going backwards. Like, I feel like I'm standing still standing beside Winnie. It's, I know. No, no, I, I, I feel like I, I do I really nothing. I don't want you guys to feel this, but I, my team, I yeah. all bring them up. Because you know what, a, Phil, we're sleeping too much. That's our problem. You guys is the leader. So you truly need to bring other people up. The more people you bring up, the more you get. Yeah. <laughs> I sleep seven to eight hours every single night. For I'm last not believing hours. anything you say years. when you say that. I don't think that's true. Yeah, and, and and now I'm gladly to do this for free. I mean, do my foundation for free, you know, right. 60 hours a week. I'm happy to do it because it's so passionate. I wish right. I had my Winnie here to do it. You guys probably wish the same because you wanted to spread the message. You wanted to share what you truly believe. Yeah. And then the, the one thing I learned is never try to convince anybody, only looking for like-minded people. Because you try to convince somebody, yeah. they're going to follow you. That's been a really hard lesson for me. The, that one for me, I think Kenny got there first. For me, I've always been like, no, I can see it. I can see it. I can, you know, and then you realize, you no, know, I can, if if you want it, you want it. You know, so, so it's funny, right? Because, um, as you talk like this, this episode, I'm going to like, I, t- I teach and all of the students I teach, you know, digital marketing to, I'm going to make them listen to this. They need to listen to this one. Thank you. Um, and, and, you but I, my foundation. Ask yeah, them yeah, my foundation. But, but, but I do think, I think it's a thing, like, cause I think 
I think, um, you know, you, like the, the hustle that you show is kind of what you need, right? Because all of these, all of these students are facing the same thing is they can't get hired without experience, right? Okay. But they, they think that they cannot get experience unless they get hired, right? But, and I keep trying to tell them, no, you know, like, especially if you're a digital marketer, 90% of the businesses out there, they don't understand digital marketing. So if you just volunteer, go down the street, pick a restaurant, volunteer, help them, you'll get the experience you need to get hired somewhere, right? Yeah. But they don't, they have that lack of jump, right? And so I said to Kenny, I, like, cause these students always come to me and they go, oh, you know, you, sir, you, you have all these other businesses. Maybe I can work on those. Right. And, and Kenny always says, yeah, yeah, let's bring them in. And then what I learned is, no, I got, they got to show up. And so like this semester, there, there are two, two of them that literally came to me and said, we want to work on your business. And then they emailed me later and said, you know, how do I work on you? What, what can I do? I'll volunteer out, you know, and I said, no, no, we don't volunteer. I'll pay you, but okay, let's let, let me give you something. And I was telling Kenny, um, one of them, I hadn't, I said to her, okay, just let me send you a brief so you can go and create some stuff. And she went on her own and, and just started doing things, right? Because she wants the experience so badly, right? So I, it, it really, you know, to me, that's like a big deal, right? Because you realize this person really wants it, right? So why won't I help? I, I can be there to help, right? But if they don't want it, they have to want it. Like they, well, have they, to want want it. It, they don't want it. Right. And, and right. like you, you can't just show up and go, I want it. And then, and then, you know, right. <laughs> but I think, and I think it's, relent, it doesn't work that way, right? Like, but that's, that's, that's the trick, yeah. right? In my yeah. foundation right now, we're working with five universities in Vancouver here. I was just in the International Women's Day Gala for SFU's uh, Young Women in Business as a panel uh, speaking there. Uh, so basically, we work with Douglas College, CAPU, um, BCIT, and uh, SFU, UBC. So they're students. And we have a lots of digital marketing and a marketing student as our volunteers <laughs> in our team. Almost com complete our team with 12 of them. They're all students. And I'm working with professors in different universities for their marketing team. They send three or four students as a cohort to work on a project for us. Right, yeah, yeah. If you look at how our foundation becoming today, yeah. I only have money to hire one part-time person, $1,500 a month. Everybody work volunteer for the last right. two and a half years to today's level. And the accolade, you know, the, 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 the yeah. publicity, yeah. all because our 30 some volunteers, they're Oh, yeah. mostly university marketing student, project management student, finance student, business admin student, mainly. Because I told them, I said, I give you a ground. I give you a play stage. You can create, you can do whatever you want. Come out to the idea and tell us, go to try it. Because I'm new with this startup as a foundation. Whatever yeah. you do, try it. Doesn't work, we change. Exactly. Because we're a startup. <laughs> But you get the experience that you need yes. now they to be able to go into the workplace. The and say, the job. Yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. the point is, though, is they could do that with other people too if they choose. To your yeah. point, Phil, one, work on your own digital. Uh, you know, you see people that say they, they got all the experience, then you look at what their world is like, whether it's LinkedIn or uh, yeah. any of the social media or their web page, you're thinking, well, if that's all you're going to give. <laughs> You know, I don't know if this is going to work out. Like, I mean, show me that you either volunteer, make your own house nice and clean inside yeah. and out before yeah. you go and clean someone else's house. Yeah, you walk the walk and talk the talk. Exactly. And then and then it's not hard to find work. Mm -hmm. You know, relatively speaking, I get it. You know, it's, it's a little tough out there. We know that. Oh, but there, there's stuff work. out there it, that like, takes work. There's no lying about it, right? It takes you gotta, work. You got to work. You got to sweat. Yeah. yeah, but the soft skills every job can teach you. I truly believe it. And, yep. and so, so when the when in that gala and the, the moderator asked us and said, "What the, the one suggestion you can give to the student? They're looking for like they're always already you know thirty year or fourth year looking for going to the career." I, so my suggestion giving to them is like a treat every single job as an opportunity. Absolutely. Never treat it as how much money they paid you. Then learn something. Yeah, it's just to switch your mind and thinking that it's an opportunity for you. And then how much you can help that boss to earn money, help yep. your major to look good. 
you will get the promotion, even in corporate world. For sure. Uh, but I only wanted to spend time with the people they wanted. I'm not yeah. going to waste the time with the people that they don't want it. You call nothing us. Wrong. Nothing you wrong with they don't whenever want Whenever you want. Yeah. That's what I'm telling you now. You call us anytime you want. Yeah, we're around. We want to help you. We we think. Well, we I live in the you. city. I'm not far from you. publicity, and my goal is to reach two thousand members by the end of this year. Right now, we're nine forty. I'm no. thinking definitely can be done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that target's low now. You're already sure, like. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, every time we said the target always low because uh, um, my my first business plan in 2022, we're saying to reach 300 member by December 2023. <laughs> Well, you did that. Long so that's past great. that one. Yeah, long, long, long past that one. But that's then, awesome. I, I truly know nothing about nonprofit. Yeah. It's a brand new. Um, so I'm saying if we're teaching other people to be entrepreneur, we need to be a startup ourselves to show them. Yeah, you don't right. have money, don't have knowledge, you still can do it yeah. if you yeah. have the drive. You got to hustle. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, you have the hustle. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Rose. You guys is wonderful. And Kenny, definitely, if I feel not coming here, I take you for lunch. No problem. Oh, I'll come on. I'll come on visit. I'll come on visit. Like. Come on visit. not far. You're 20 minutes for me. Not even. Yeah. I'm and and I'm 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 love to be the, I'll be yeah, there. The because I'm, I'm away uh, 14 so with my husband. We okay. go to Taiwan for two weeks. Okay. And then at the end of April, we're going to Disney World in Orlando for another two weeks. Amazing. <laughs> and then in July to August, we go to Africa for one month. <laughs> For you. December, we're going away to yeah. Las Vegas for a week, and so we're busy this year. Yeah, you're um, but, uh, but between I'm here, even the tax season, you see, I'm still leaving because my team is really good at doing yeah. during tax season. <laughs> they don't I'll need send you me. some dates. I, I'll be there April 1 through 5. Okay, um, yeah, definitely here. Yeah, but I'm we back. Are, like six. Kenny and I are doing a bunch of filming, so we just need to sort out some of those filming things and then once we do oh, that I'll, I'll... exactly you guys do like you guys do so much i know phil you're one of the professors yeah, uh, are you yeah. in ransom or in uft where are you no in... no i'm i'm at a local college called centennial college um, oh, so okay okay always... i probably got a student there because we yeah. have uh, several west side uh, work oh yeah okay yeah come to be our volunteers here okay yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, so I'm I'm a I teach digital marketing at Centennial College, and then we encourage them to be our volunteer or send a cohort to do a project, real project. But 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 seriously, I can connect you to the school because I've been trying to. Um, the school has some very good networks, and then I've been connecting them to other networks, right? Like so. Kenny and I have a, a very good relationship with the Canadian Health Food Association. So I've tried to connect them with them, yeah. um, you know, so I can definitely um, get the digital, like the dean um, to, to talk to you. And then, you know, we can figure out something there. So for sure, yeah. for sure. So I do that. And then Kenny and I do some freelancing. We do some stuff together. We do some stuff separately. The mm -hmm. podcast we, we produce um, one a week, every week we've done it. Uh, one a week for the last six and a half years, sometimes twice a week. Um, mm -hmm. And then what we're trying to do now is we are getting into video because we'd like we'd like to keep the influence going. So we 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 know that YouTube is a thing. Um, so the podcast is on YouTube now. Uh, we've got shorts. Um, so we do a lot of educating on YouTube. Um, so um, yeah. and so we're coming out to be able to film. Um, hopefully some pretty cool footage at like a commissary kitchen. We're going to Choxo, the um, chocolate people. Um, wow. We're going to go, we're going to film on their plant tour and kind of do a walking podcast. So we'll see how that goes. We're actually. Go do some going, ghost chicken, uh, well, ghost kitchen in Vancouver. I believe there are several. Yeah, people yeah, yeah. So, so it's called Coho Commissary Kitchen. Yeah, yeah. So, so we're oh. going, we're, we're going to be filming at Coho. So. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. really great. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. That'll be fun. One of my contact really actually excited. is the owner of one of them. Jason oh, yeah. Wong. I'm not sure you know Jason okay. Wong or not. He was yeah, a we know Emirat because um, Emirat's one of the partners in Coho Kitchen, so I don't know if they're the same. There's a, there's a, there's a few in town. Thing, or... There's a few of them, yeah. But uh, I have a lots of contact locally, and also if you need a speakers for your podcast, or if you need any, you know, like in different industry, I have so many clients. So so it this is... is why everybody is afraid speaking yeah. for us. <laughs> yeah, I think, my clients. <laughs> I think what's interesting is if you have um, small medium entrepreneurs that 
um, you know, kind of share our mindset and you think are, are kind of up and coming brands yeah. or like up and coming oh, businesses, I, I definitely send them to us, right? Yeah, I, I will. So if you yeah. look at our YouTube channel, there's a young lady, the Korean lady called the uh, Checking. She created a small bakery shop and now she's selling scaled to all US, Canadian big stores. It was phenomenal. And yeah. she was one of the speakers on our YouTube. Uh, I, you, you open our YouTube, we have two, two different colors. And those uh, red color is called a storytelling. So we invite the local small business owner to share their journey. And okay. mo most of the time I'm the host, right. similar like a podcast, but actually it's a share. So that's one of our signature program is our one of our pillar program called a storytelling. We do once a month on Zoom for an hour. And then we have another one is a workshop teaching you basic of the business. Yep. You know, you yeah. incorporate your business and your taxation, HRs, marketing, and all different things. So, so Phil, you can be one of our marketing speakers for sure. And yeah, anytime have, you want. Uh, yeah, I'm and, in. So, and, anytime and you want. We, uh, we have this uh, called Idea Lab contest. If you wanted to be the judge, and I can invite you, Kenny or Phil, it's on May 23rd online, like on, okay. on Zoom from 6 30 to 9 30. Better for Phil, maybe too late. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> you know what? Okay. we'll connect over the next little bit, three of yeah. us. We'll do a call outside of the podcast. And if you want exactly. to talk, because yeah. so we have many, done, yeah, there's many opportunities. We do some yeah. judging of different things for different organizations too. We do a lot of stuff with Canadian Food uh, Associate, mm -hmm. Health Food Association. We do a lot of with BC Food and Beverage. So we do mm -hmm. a lot of stuff like this. And it's all, it's all give back work them yeah so so let me um we have a clients they wanted to start business you probably can introduce somebody can give them some tips well i mean if it's if, yeah, I mean, we might be able to connect them with different people if they're doing some yeah. manufacturing or they need manufacturing or yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. We, so, so we're the connector basically i see my that's what we do the connector that's yeah, what we, we do too well that's what we do we pretty much connect yeah. that's that's pretty much yeah, what we yeah, solely yeah. do is well, lots of connecting we wanted I'm, to okay. send them to the right place yeah. So, so let's let's um we'll book another call with you, um. But let's let's close off this podcast. So if people want to find you, Winnie, yeah. where do they find you? Uh, they just find on our www.v2rf.org. V as Victor, two as number two, R as Roger, F as Frank. Dot org is my foundation. I also found her on LinkedIn. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We're, we'll just find my, my name, uh, Winnie Sue, yeah. W-I-N-I-E, Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> and then Sue is H-S-U. So yeah. we'll, we'll put most of the links down below in the yeah. podcast episode, so that way you guys can click and find her. The uh, I'm on the YouTube channel, which is also, um, you know, um, it's, it's at V2RF is yeah. the um is the youtube handle and it's yeah. it's quite compelling it's it's a really great uh really really great channel so um this is really awesome um thank you, I thank put you it, uh, in the yeah i know i have it i have it don't worry i i've got it now um usually what happens is when when you start talking i start looking for all the breadcrumbs <laughs> so I can talk to them and put them in the this, episode notes. So this young lady is a phenomenal. I truly, yeah. truly respect her and her journeys. It's 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 really really um, inspiring. And, and Winnie, I, if you I, if you have her or other people, just you have our yeah. email. I just connect us and we'll we'll get yeah, on the yeah. podcast. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, she, awesome. she will love to. Yeah, sure. Because you yeah. share the information. So many people love it. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. Let's do it. Um, thank you for coming on the show. And then, and then that was we, awesome. we'll, we'll, um, we'll, we'll try to connect, connect when he's in town. <laughs> okay. Uh, so let me put that notes in my uh, first to the fifth. Uh, yeah, it's the first, yeah. just right after yeah. Easter. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I will be we're, here. We're pretty close. Like I'm, I'm pretty, we're pretty close to understanding what our schedule will look like. So it yeah, won't be long before. Yeah, just the time slot and then you're yeah. open. And yeah, then yeah. Uh, I'm more flexible than you guys, I think, because you have a job to do here. And I think you have a goal. I feel here. like you couldn't possibly have time, but we no. really appreciate it. Um, uh, I yeah. think I'm, I'm quite uh, uh, time management pretty good. 
<laughs> I still have my 90 years old parents are taking care, right? I mean, still have my family oh, to take care of, yeah. not only working. <laughs> wow. I, I have a great amazing. husband and a great son, and my parents both supporting me. So I'm awesome. really, really lucky. Amazing. Yeah. Well, you're a treat to talk to. Thank yeah. you for doing this thank for us. You, but thank you. Yeah, we have a lot to share to each other. Thank Sounds you good. very much. Bye bye. Okay. See you later, Winnie. Tell you stick around. Winnie will talk later. Bye bye. Bye. I'm exhausted. I, she's amazing. Yeah, I'm just so tired now. Yeah, I'm. I'm a little tired. Yeah, yeah. She's great. I, 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 I don't think you know. No. Thank you for listening. Just thanks for listening, everybody.